and I will avoid the very difficult terminology just to make it so easy. The idea basically just how to prep, how to pray properly, inshallah. كيف نصلي صلاة صحيحة. Now, first of all, file number one, شروط صحة الصلاة. The conditions or the preconditions that must be fulfilled before we start the prayer. Okay? Number one, the wudu. Wudu is not part of the salah, but you have to have it before you start the salah. You can't start the salah without having the ablution, the wudu. So this is called in fiqh, shart sahat salah. A prerequisite, a precondition that must be fulfilled before I start the prayer. Number one. Number two. The purity, the tahara of the place that I will pray on. They should be pure. Then, three, the purity or purification of my body. Four, the purification of my clothes from najasa. Place, body, clothes from najasa. Now, najasa is a ritual impurity, which is applicable on three basic common things. Blood, urine, stool. <laughs> or, if we vomit. <laughs> out of our stomach after we eat, they are called najasat, okay? Blood, if there is blood in the place, I'm not allowed to pray. If there is a blood or a vomiting or urine or a stool on my clothes or my body in any place, I'm not, uh, if I pray, my prayer is not valid. I should remove the najasa, clean the najasa, take off the clothes that contain najasa, clean it, whatever. So this is called the ritual impurity, okay? Najasat. Type. Then, the time should enter. Shurut Satah Salah. If I pray the Asr, before the Asr comes, this is not considered <laughs> Asr, which means the time, the Adhan, the time of the Asr should, I, I should be aware, uh, make sure, not just, do you know the time? It doesn't matter. Khalas, Allah, no, my niya. Allahu Akbar, Salat Asr. No, wait. <laughs> Look, if the time has not started yet, if you pray, this will be nafil, an extra ajr. It will not be considered asr or dhuhr or anything. You need to know the time. Do your best. And the final one, the direction of the Kaaba. Do your best. So, they are what? File number one. Preconditions. Shurut, sahat al-salat. Things that must be fulfilled. I should be aware of before I start the prayer. Wudu. The purity of my body, the purity of, from the najas of my clothes, the place, the time, and the direction of the Kaaba. Now, I start the prayer. <laughs> okay? Now, the first basic thing when I start the prayer, for my prayer to be considered is the niyyah, intention. <laughs> you must specify in your niyyah, it's not a condition to say it, but it's a condition to have it inside you clearly, inside your heart and your mind. If you decided to utter, to say it, no problem. To say, Usalli, Fard, Al Dhuhr. Shulla Amla, no one to be Ah, so exactly in the same moment I closed my eyes because I did like this. <laughs> I did not see him, subhanAllah. <laughs> I forget what I was saying. <laughs> ah, Niya, yes. For example, if I said, uh, for example, أصلي فرض العصر لله تعالى It's permissible. But the condition is to have it in your heart. Okay? Now the niyyah. What's the important the niyyah? You need to specify. Are you going to pray dhuhr, fajr, sunnah, fard, taraweeh? You need to specify. You are praying what exactly? When you stand, you need, the niyyah is a rukun. Okay? When you say, for example, before you say Allahu Akbar, Asr, Dhuhr, Niyya. Usalli, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the fard of al isha For example, this is the Niyya. It's a basic condition. You must specify it. Okay? Then, after I have a Niyya, I have Takbiratul Ihram. Takbiratul Ihram basically is the action when I say the word Allahu Akbar loudly with the intention of starting the prayer. Not this action. This action is an extra thing. Okay? Forget this. I'm talking about the word Allahu Akbar. In Arabic, takbiratul ihram, 
means the takbira, which is Allahu Akbar, by saying it immediately, everything outside the prayer is haram. <laughs> which means I'm not allowed to walk, to talk, to laugh, to eat, to drink, to chat. To, oh, everything is haram except the salah. <laughs> That's why it's called takbirat al-ihram. By saying Allahu Akbar, now you can do like this, Allahu Akbar. And if you did not do it, still your prayer is valid. But if you did not say Allahu Akbar, okay? If you did not pronounce it, say it, you have not started your prayer. You can say in your, for example, in your niyyah, I want to pray dhuhr. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Not valid. <laughs> you must say Allahu Akbar with the lowest sound that you can hear yourself at least, the minimum. But you have to say it, okay? Now, everything is ready. I had the niyyah. Then I said what? Allahu Akbar. After Allahu Akbar, the most basic thing is Al-Fatiha. We have a dua. I will not mention it because it's not a basic. I'm trying to focus on the most important basics so as not just to confuse you because it has a lot of details. So Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha is a pillar. You must read it. So read it, please do your best. If you are an Arab or a non-Arab, many of us might not be aware that you might not be reading the Fatiha properly. <laughs> okay? Say the words, try to ask someone if you are reading, saying the letters properly, you pronounce them correctly. Don't do it very fast because when you do it very fast, you might, you might lose saying some of the words. For example, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Even if I'm fast, you need to say it in a proper way. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki, Yawmiddin, Iyaka, Na'abudu, Wa Iyaka, Nasta'in. More than that, you might be losing some of the words. If you missed some of the letters, your prayer might be invalid. So be careful. The Fatiha. After the Fatiha, read few ayat or a short surah from the Quran. If you did not read for whatever reason, still your prayer is valid. But if you did not read the Fatiha, your prayer is not valid. Okay? Now focus. I finished the Fatiha and the Quran. I want to do the Ruku' now. Now the Ruku' which is kneeling down now is Rukun. It's a pillar. Plus what we call Tuma'nina. Now this is no matter how I do a ruku, okay? I put my hands on my knees like this, and now, the ruku itself is a pillar. Now, standing still for few seconds, at least two seconds, is rukun in itself, which means called tuma'nina. Yani, I finished reading now. I said, Allah, for example, Allah, forget, it's not compulsory to, to do your hand, but not even the say. Now, the rukun is just to move, okay? You say Allahu Akbar. Now when I did the Allahu Akbar, this is the Rukun. Don't do it like this very quickly. <laughs> if you did it like, your prayer is not valid. You must do the Rukur and stand still and say Subhana Rabbi al Azim three times. If you said it one time, it's okay. But less than one second, you are not fulfilling the shart or the condition of what we call Tuma'nina. Tuma'nina means to stand still for a span of time that you have achieved the ruku'ah, which means at least, subhanAllah, if I said, subhanAllah Rabbi al-Azim, subhanAllah Rabbi al-Azim, subhanAllah Rabbi al-Azim, three times, you have to go about five seconds. If you said that one time, at least two seconds. This is the minimum. If you did it like, this is a big mistake. Okay? So now, the ruku'ah, the tuma'nina and the ruku'ah. After the now, when you raise up from the ruku', this is called i'tidal. I'tidal means when you finish, you stand like this and stay at least for a moment. Don't do it very quickly. For example, doing now ruku', subhanahu rabbil azim, Allah. You see, like this? No, this is a big mistake. You do it like this. Sami Allah, holy man Hamida, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. So you stand at least, at least two to three seconds. Just let's count down. Tuma'nina. This is another rukun. Just to stand and to stay for a moment. Okay? Then we do what? The sujood now, the prostration. 
Now, when you go to the sujood, basically, you have to make your sujood on seven organs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> okay? So, when I do it, I make sure that these seven organs, because Prophet Muhammad said in the hadith, umirtu an asjuda ala sab'ati a'zum. I was commanded to do the sujood on seven a'zum, uh, uh, literally means, you know, bones, which means seven organs, to do the, now. So when you do it, plus the tuma'nina. What's the tuma'nina? We say to stand for a moment that you have achieved it properly. Now, one of the mistakes that many people they do, especially the youth, when they do the sujood, they keep doing like this. Look at, I'm sorry, I need to do it like this, but Sani. When they do the sujood, they keep there playing with it like this, like this. But do it like this. Both with seven. When you do the sujood. So when you see your kid, your son, keep putting his, you know, feet like this or playing. Some people, they just keep it, you know, flying in the air. They do not touch the ground. It's another big mistake. That's why you need to know. So, sorry. <coughs> so, after doing the sujood, after, uh, okay. I did the sujood now. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Now, I need Tuma'anina. Then, al-julusu bayna sajdatayn. Now, I have this. Jalsa, this jalsa between the two sajdatain, okay, between the two prostrations. I must have the tuma'anina as well. So don't do it quickly. These are pillars. Yani, doing the sujood like this, for example. Allah Akbar, like this, this is a mistake. Just Allahu Akbar. At least two seconds. They so say Allahu Akbar. Do any kind, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, whatever. If you don't say anything, the pillar is not to move quickly, <laughs> not to say something, not to move quickly. So just calm down for a moment, okay? Do the rukun, then go to the second, what? Sajda, which is Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, three times. If you are in a hurry, at least one time. Then I sit. Now I finished one complete rak'ah. I repeat the same thing if I'm praying the Fajr two times, if I'm praying the Maghrib three times. When I sit for the final rak'ah, which is the second or the third or the fourth, now sitting here like this basically is a rukun. Now saying at-tahiyyatu lillahi was salawat al-tayyibat is a rukun as well, it's, it's a pillar. You must say it. Okay? At-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawat al-tayyibat. Assalamu alayka ayyuhal nabiyyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lahu. Ashhadu anna muhammadan abdu wa rasuluh. Now then we have as-salah al-ibrahimiyya. Now this is first. Second one, as-salah al-ibrahimiyya. According to the madhab al-shafi'i, now do it in full in case, in case. If you are in a hurry, you have a problem, you need to catch the train, you need something, at least Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, at least. <laughs> the pillar, the basic. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Preferably complete it, okay? Now I finished. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamidum majid. Now after I finish this, I have, I need to do the salam now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Moving the head is not rukun. But saying the word, assalamu alaikum, by the first, assalamu alaikum, I am out of the prayer. <laughs> by the first one, I finish the prayer. Second one is sunnah. <laughs> but just, you need to know. Okay? Now, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. By this, the... The, the prayer is finished with the, with the very, very, very basic. I mean by the basics, the backbones, the skeleton, okay? I'm not mentioning the very, very tiny details. I repeat very quickly. I have the wudu. Taharat, the place. The tahara, perfect of the place. My body, my clothes, 
دايركشن ذا تايم نيه اي وونت اصلي لله تعالى فرض العشاء تكبيره الاحرام الله اكبر الفاتحه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ذن سمثينغ من القران قل هو الله احد الله الصمد اي فينيش ذن اي دو ذا ركوع بلس وات طمانينه ويتش از تو ستاند ستيل ات ليست فور ا مومنت بريفيرابلي سي سبحان ربي العظيم ثري تايمز ذن وي دو ذا اعتدال سمع الله لمن حمده stay for a moment which is at least two seconds just do the rukun then go to the first sajda tumanina subhan rabbi al-ala preferably three times then we do the jalsa between the two sujoods with tumanina then the second sajda subhan rabbi al-ala preferably three times I go up, second rak'ah, third rak'ah, fourth rak'ah. Final one, when I finish, when I sit, I start at tahiyyatu, lillahi wa salat tayyibat. Then, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Taban, if you want to make dua, whatever. After that, you want to make dua in your language, in Arabic, in English, whatever. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before the salam, it's completely open. You just say whatever you want. Keep making dua. When you finish, by saying assalamu alaikum by uttering the word assalamu alaikum you are outside of the prayer okay assalamu complete action assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh this is the very 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 basics now your questions i promise not to take long time i number one you raised up your hand and sorry I saw someone here. Number two, number three, number four. Famalish? Missed? No one? Number one, it's you. It's you, number five. Yes? So, in the middle of the prayer when you're sitting, do your toes have to be like curled like this? Or can you kind of curl Okay. Back? He's asking about when you do the sujood, you mean, huh? Sujood and sitting in between. Yeah. Okay. Now, the, the, the best preferable one when you do the sujood is like this. Okay? Like this. If you can't for whatever reason, it's still valid. Now, when you sit, between, we have a specific one. I can't do it because I have a tearing in my tissues. I'm not able to do it. Okay? But you can just see very quickly. Now, when we sit in the second drakah, for example, the high preferable is to look like this. Second out of three or four. Okay? Can you see it all? Okay? Now, the final rak'ah, which is second or third or fourth, this is the sunnah. You do the left one, you take it out, and you do like this one. Okay? Can you see? This is what you do, if you can. If you have any problem because of your bones, your leg, your thigh, or whatever, and you want to do it like this, it's okay. You want to do it like this, it's okay. You have a problem and you have to do it in this way even, it's okay as long as you have a valid reason. Okay? The sunnah preferable is this. This and this. Okay? But it's not pillars, not basics. So it's up to, I personally, I have a problem in my feet and I can't do it. So since many years I can't do it. It's not a pillar. Okay? But this is the sunnah. Number two, I think, yes? Same question? SubhanAllah. Okay. Now, if one person is reading the Fatiha and is reading the Fatiha, No problem. No, no, no. 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 He's asking if I forgot to read part of the Quran after the Fatiha. Is there anything to do? Nothing. خلاص. Your prayer is valid. If you forget. If you forget. If he did not do it for whatever reason, no sujood sahu, sahu, nothing is missed. Without reason. But don't make it a'ada. Are you with me? If you made it like a continuous action, you will miss a great blessings by reading the Quran. Now, because it's part of the sunnah. But now, for t sometimes, for many reasons, I'm in a hurry, for example. I need to catch something, mashi. 
I have something. I have a quick meetings, whatever. Whatever reason. Intentionally, I did not read the Quran. My prayer is valid. But don't make it a habit. <laughs> Clear? Type. Number, I think, you, brother, yes. If I'm behind Imam, yeah. To be honest with you now, we have different opinions of the madhahib. <laughs> if you are a Hanafi or something else, I, what I know is about the Shafi'i. Now the Shafi'i is taking, I, I'm explaining according to the Shafi'i madhahib. According to the Shafi'i madhahib, Prophet Muhammad uh, said in a hadith sahih, لا صلاة لمن لم يقرأ بأم الكتاب لا صلاة لمن لم يقرأ بفاتحة الكتاب The prayer of the person is not valid if he does not read the Fatiha. So for them, whether you are an Imam, or a Ma'moom, or behind the Imam, in Dhuhr, or Asr, or prayer, or Fajr, or whatever, you have to read the Fatiha. Okay? Now, that's why, now the Hanafi Madhab, they have another opinion. They have another explanation in another Hadith. Okay? Even the Ahnaf, when they have a true fiqh, they keep silent for a few seconds to open a space for anyone who's following the other madhahib to read the Fatiha. Okay? So, to the best of my knowledge, yes, read it. Now, in case if the Imam does not have this kind of fiqh and he's not giving you a space, do it quickly, as, uh, as short, uh, as much as you can, with the lowest noise that you can do. Wallahu a'lam. Brother, yes. Sorry, the sujood does it have to be what? No, 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 no. Actually, don't let the elbows uh, touch. No, yeah, j just, just the palm. Uh, he's asking about this. Look at me now. When you do the sujood, don't do it like this. This is, by the way, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu asked us not to do it like this. Okay? Do it like this. Not like this. Not like this. Like this. Okay? Any other question? Yes, brother. Yeah, my question is about that. I'm praying on a chair. Ah. And you said sujood is also you have to go and do the submission because I cannot go down. No problem. If you have a valid reason, I mean for a health reason, خلاص, alhamdulillah. For you in special, you can't do the sujood. خلاص, no problem. You just at least, uh, yes. Make, make your ruku' in the half distance and your sujood on air, okay, on what uh, distance, for example, I'm sitting like this, for example, this is the half of my ruku', then this is the i'tidal, and this is my sujood, no problem. Wallahi, this is new for me, I have no idea about it. No, no, it's new for me, I, I don't know it. I don't know it. And by the way, by the way, doing the uh, uh, Allah Muhammad standing as a qiyam uh, is, is, is a pillar and a rukun in the fard prayer, the compulsory. If you are praying the sunnah, the nafil, uh, the taraweeh, qiyam, you are allowed to sit even if you can't stand. As long as not, not praying the fard. The, 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 these things that I have highlighted, basically most of the pillars, especially the Qiyam, it's a compulsory if it's what? Fard. You are praying Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Anything else, you can pray it while sitting on a chair or even sitting on the ground, even if you are just slightly tired, no problem. Or, okay, so you can do it, all the Sunan. But some people sometimes they are so tired because they are tired, they are not able uh, to stand. No problem. Pray it while you are standing, uh, sorry, sitting on the ground or sitting on a chair, inshallah. Regardless of health. Yes? Yes, regardless. Yes. It's allowed. Alhamdulillah, it's part of the rukhas that we have. The compulsory of doing the full qiyam is in the fard. Even the fard, you might have a license if really you, are, uh, you have a health problem. Like the brother here. So, for example, even the fard, he can't. I mean, even if it's not long, you can say <laughs> it's up to you. You just choose. <laughs> okay? So we, we have this kind of flexibility with that, alhamdulillah. It will reduce the right? Yes? It will reduce the adjunct. Maybe. I mean, alhamdulillah, it's, look, now we have the complete form as long as there is no reason. Now, you know what I say, because the word reason 
cannot be restricted with a, with a law. The reason could be simply just, I mean, I, I, I feel more comfortable while sitting. No problem. So we can't say the reason should be, for example, approved by a doctor. <laughs> okay? It's up to you. You are allowed. If you feel, for whatever reason, sometimes, you will feel more comfortable to pray it while you are standing, just do it. It's a license. Alhamdulillah. You are allowed to do it. Yes. Sorry about it. Yes. Yeah. You, you, you. Yes. I have two questions. Oh, no problem. So one is direction of, uh, if you're traveling in a bus or train or plane, so your direction of your prayer is going to be the way... Okay, the good question. You are traveling in a bus, train, plane, whatever. You do your best ijtihad to observe, at least for the takbir at ihram if you can. Because you are a traveler. A traveler has a special rulings. Okay? A traveler in the plane or airplane, even you can't stand us in many of the cases, you can't, yeah, because you have to put the seat belt and you can't move, etc. So you have, a, uh, as a traveler, you have a special conditions. Now, if I can know, if I'm controlling, imagine that I'm first class in the airplane. Some first classes, you know, you have a good space. Some. Really, you can pray in full. So do it, type. I'm the economy class. I'm hardly able <laughs> to do anything, anything. خلاص, like this. طيب, أنا, let's imagine I don't have anyone next to me here or here. And you, you know, in the, in the airplane, you can see the direction. All the time they keep uh, giving you the plane. 99% of the, uh, you can see. For example, let's say I have a space. I'm not bothering anyone. And the, the, and the airplane is flying like this. And I discovered that the Kaaba is just like this. I can just move like this. Do it. طيب. If if the airplane is keep moving all the time, every few seconds, for example, just if you can, if for whatever reason to know the direction, just takbir al-ihram, do it. طيب. I have no compass and the airplane does not have this. Just in the direction that you are doing it. So the idea is, as long as there is a way, there is a space, there is an ability to know, no. If you can apply part of it, do it. If you can't, just do what you can. It's, it's like with the idea of the wudu, for example. Amazingly, in this great Islam. If there is water, you must do ablution with water. But if there is no water, tayammum. If there is a clear dust, do it with tayammum. There is nothing you can do it just with, with, with anything, just on this wall, okay? In this carpet. Okay, sometimes it, it happens. Like whatever, if I have nothing, I have nothing, it's completely freezing, with snow, there is no water, very cold, whatever. Okay? So, alhamdulillah, we have like levels. The idea is not the action, the idea is the attitude. You got my point? Yes. Second yeah. So, uh, in Sujur, an airplane, they say don't put your head on the table. Mm. Is that valid or can you put your head on the... I mean, uh, I'm not sure if it is invalid. It could be valid, but I'm not sure. I just lost my memory. But most probably, there's no problem if you do it without it or with it. It's okay, inshallah. Yeah. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Finished? Yes, brother. Hi, uh, In an airplane, do you pray according to your origin, destination, or the region over which you're flying? It's the exact time that you are doing. Yani, for example, you, you need to do some ishtihad. Yani, let's talk about Maghrib, for example, or Fajr. Or Maghrib, Maghrib in specific, the most clear one. Regardless, imagine I left Toronto now. Now, Maghrib should be, let's say, after 40 minutes. I'm going to the Middle East now. I'm against completely the move of the sun. After 20 minutes, <laughs> okay, the sun disappears. So practically, I'm in a status that the sun, the Maghrib has come. So I don't care with what happens behind me in Toronto. Now, on air, I can see that the sun has disappeared. So it's Maghrib for me, I pray. I Good my point? Huh? Oh, okay, no, no, his point, uh, should I be thinking as if I'm still in Toronto, for example? No, no, you should be considering what you are in now. Wallahu alam. Next, yes, brother. Uh, yeah, I just want to talk about, you mentioned the impurities at the beginning, 
Yeah. Yeah. Blood, yes. Does it have to be a significant amount or can it be any? Oh, Zakala, good question. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, I was avoiding any kind of tiny details, but as long as you ask. Now, he's asking that, for example, blood, urine, stool, they are from the impurities, najasats. Significant amount or any amount? No, actually, it should be according to the fuqaha, at least more than more than the size of the two dollars Canadian dollars. It, more, which is if less, if it's for example a quarter dollar or something, it's called and the jasat al ma'fu anha, which is the permissible. You know the size of the two dollars coin. If it's less than, it's preferable to remove it. If you can't remove it, I will give you a simple example. Let's imagine that I have a very small injury here in my neck or my hand. So or a small something. So I scratch it without paying attention. The blood came and it's stuck and I did not see it. I have no idea. For example, for whatever reason here, for example. I prayed after I finished in the mirror, I noticed that there is a spot of blood here, for example. Now, if it is more than that, okay, I, pray, I repeat my prayer. If it's less, just clean it and that's it. Good my point? So this, it's a good question. Halas, yes, but yeah. The same question, if you're coming to the mosque and somebody splashed the dirt on your clothes, hmm. do we have to clean it up or can we continue the prayer? You mean normal dirt? You mean? No, no. If you are not sure that it is najasa, no problem. It, I mean, the prayer is valid. Preferable, it's, it's called mustahsan now. It's preferable to remove it if you can. But if you had no other choice, okay, and you prayed, it's valid. Now, the idea is just the najasat, which is a religious ritual impurity. The other things we call it like uh, wasakh, okay? <laughs> like any, uh, anything else, okay? But they are not ritual najasa. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, we were taught for Surah Al Fatiha mm. to say uh, Maliki Yomidin. Mm. But I hear a lot of shapes that say Maliki. Maliki Yomidin. No, it's part of the Quran. Prophet Muhammad, it's Qiraat. It's part of the Qiraat. So yes, 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 yeah. You know, by the way, the Quran. The Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in a more than different style or qira'ah. And he taught the Sahaba this qira'at. Okay? Now, so Maliki Yawmiddin, Maliki Yawmiddin, both of them from the Quran. From the Quran. So the Quran is considered from Maliki and Malik. This is part of the ijaz of the Quran. Now, for example, الذي جمع ما لو وعدده والضحى والضحى Both of them from the Quran. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did say it. So it's part of the Quran. Yes, yes, it is, yes. Yusuf, you raised up your hand. So if, if you're praying the Fard and yeah. the Prish and you're the, and your leg is broken, so do you actually stand up or just... Your leg is broken? I mean, do what suits you from health point of view. Whatever good for you, you do it, it's permissible. It's an exceptional case. And what I explained is the normal, the normal case. Any exceptional case has its own rulings. Yes. If you're out to pray and you're not sure if you're, you have wudu or not, uh -huh. do you go and renew your wudu or do you pray? Okay. Now there is a special, a special like uh, rulings for this. If I'm not sure that I have wudu, the, the, the rulings is the following. What is the last in my mind? Is it the doubt or the confirmation? For example, let's imagine that I want to pray. Okay, do I have wudu? Yes. Now, I remember that I went to the washroom and I have doubt if I did the wudu after that. So it means I don't have wudu. Type. The last thing in my mind that I did make the wudu, but I have doubt whether I went to the washroom after that or not. I have wudu. Good my point? This is the idea. So, what is the latest that is confirmed? Remove the doubts and take what is highest in your memory as a latest. And consider it. Khalas, don't listen to the whispering and to the waswasa. Yes, brother. Yeah, speaking of wudu, uh, I know that um, when you have your wudu and you fall asleep, you have this point, right? 
When you have a wudu, you got sleep? Ah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm. Actually, to be honest with you, it's okay as long as in, 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 in the fiqh language, they call it إِذَا غَفَ أَوْ نَامَ مُمَكِّنًا مِقْعَدَتَهُ This means, you know, the idea, the idea that when we sleep, we might have, you know, this kind of wind that could come out of us. Okay? This will break the wudu. So, if I'm sitting, if I'm sleeping, while, for example, if I'm sitting like this, and I know from my body that by this status, nothing will come out of my body. <laughs> okay, even if I slept like this, and my body is firm like this, it's okay, still the wudu is with me. Even if I lost my conscious and I slept. But if I slept while I'm in this status, for example, definitely from fiqh point of view, I lost my wudu. So the idea is, Am I sitting on a status that I know from the size of my body, from the weight of my body, that it's impossible anything to come out of it? <laughs> if that's the case, still the wudu is valid. Tamam? Yalla, a'udhu Amar. Touching a thought, is that the no, 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 because al-jaf ala al-jaf tahirun bila khilaf. Yani when, when you, now basically if you have a dry, okay? Uh, dry hand, you know, uh, uh, the, the idea is with, with, with the lu'ab, okay? Now, the dog itself just doing like this, it, it's not in a jasa, as long as both of you, you are dry. Wallahu alam. Khalas, yes, Habib, tadal. Um, so like you're uh, outside, like on the field, and there's no like surface where there's like clean dust, um, there's like dirt, so... Sorry, you... you, you, you mean you touched... Something you don't know whether it's clean or not? No water. Yeah, ah, no water, you mean? Yeah, and you water. can't have water. Okay, look, brother. Now, if you don't have water, and it's very difficult to have it. I mean, if you can approach the water easily just by walking. Uh, <laughs> few distance or the, uh, going to a, a closed uh, uh, washroom, you have to seek the water. If there is no water or you have just little water for drinking and nothing extra, then you can use the dirt for tayammum. Good, final question, yes. How do you do sajjud sahu and when do you do it? Okay, uh, sajjud sahu basically according to the madhab shafi'i, you do it just uh, uh, in two cases. When you forget the water, and when you forget the Jerusalem uh, Awsat. I mean, you know, when we pray, for example, three rak'at or four rak'at, we have in the middle the second for the third and the second for the fourth. If I was praying, I'm supposed to sit for the second. I forgot, I started the third prayer, then I forgot, I remember that I lost this, the, the Jerus, then I do sujood al-sahu. Sujood al-sahu. This according to the Shafi'i. Wallahu alam. Sorry, القنوت في الفجر آسف. Because Imam Shafi'i, they do قنوت at the Fajr every day. That's why I avoid it. By the way, sujood al-sahu is sunnah. Even if something needs sujood al-sahu and you forgot to do this sahu, still your, uh, your prayer is valid. Do you need it? Last question. Yes. This happens to me a lot. Is it if you join salah, salah al you join one rak'ah late. Okay. So you pray three rak'ahs and then you say salam and you forgot that you have one rak'ah left. Then someone taps you, reminds you, but you get up. No problem. Valid. Just yes, continue. Look, look. He's asking uh, something that many of us we do it. Now, you join the prayer after you have lost one or two rak'ah. When they finished, you just said the salam and you spoke with someone. <laughs> okay. Or uh, say the salam alaikum taqabbal Allah for someone. Or even you left your place and you went to the exit. If you call, you know, according to the Madhab Shafi'i, قال ما لم يطل الفصل. If the disconnection was not traditionally a long time, you are talking about just a few, 
you know, seconds or one, two, three minutes, even if you spoke with someone, wherever you remember. Imagine that I'm praying here. Then I forgot. I left and I remembered when I was next to Sheikh Anis, for example. That's good. Immediately just, Allahu Akbar, I continue. And still, you continue and your prayer is valid, inshallah. Wa iyaakum, inshallah. Zakum Allah khair. Yes, yes, yes. You continue what you missed. Just, yes. No, you do not start a new prayer. No, you just continue. Taib, by the way, I will repeat everything, inshallah, this coming uh, weekend. Inshallah, for those, you can attend again and you can come with your questions. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa iyaakum, inshallah. Shukran alaikum. Ahlan. Kifak habibi. Shukran. 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 Shukran.